Cody McNamara is the writer, creator, and showrunner of The Great. I'm Matt Noble of Gold Derby, and I wanted to kick things off, Tony, by asking you, uh, how is this? Sh- how is the show in season three different to what you imagined the show being when you were writing that pilot? Uh, well, hi, Matt. Um, oh, hi. I think... <laughs> I think it's different in, well, I think season three particularly is probably a more, is quite an emotional season in a way. And and in a way it got, I think it's like every season changes slightly. And this season, I guess we, I thought it could be, it would probably be still really funny, but maybe darker and sort of more, a more emotional season. And I think because you just, spend longer you've spent 20 hours with the characters so you want to do more and um and so I think yeah I think that was sort of a challenge and sort of what we wanted I mean I think when I wrote the pilot I didn't quite know what would pay you know you're kind of just hoping you get a third season let alone knowing what it was I mean I always knew roughly where I was sort of the overarching what was what's her life what am I telling but I did I think tonally you kind of uh, each season you want to do something slightly different and you want to change it up a bit for yourself, for the audience, you know, for everyone. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but as like the seasons go on, like as uh, the characters evolve and change, like uh, something that I think is interesting is in this show, particularly when one character changes, it can sort of trigger other characters having to change yeah. and like sort of, it can be a bit of a, there can be ripple effects to changes in characters' motives and intentions and all that sort of stuff. So how do you sort of consider a character change when it's going to impact maybe how another character changes? It, it It's hard because you, it's true. And there's, we've got like, I think our, we have a top 13 characters. Yeah. Um, so sometimes it's like, what, what he's going to do what? Um, a lot of whiteboards with a lot of like, but if we do that to him, Vlalimentov. Um, so there's a lot of that, but that's part of the fun of it is trying to like move everyone. And we and there's always the bedrock of Catherine. So it, ultimately I'm always like, well, how does everything relate to Catherine? And everyone, everything always has to. So we're always essentially telling her story and all these little things between other people ripple into her story or what they do kind of affects her story. So it's got a, it's always got sort of guardrails around how we're going to tell it in a structural sense, because it's so easy to go off. Like, you know, we've often had storylines and we'll go, we'll go off with um, George and we'll do this. And then, you know, you kind of go, well, we've just got to stay close to what the show's about, which is Catherine's story, you know, but within that, each season we get more room with for the ensemble who are so great that each, each season I try to bring them more and more stuff, I suppose, um, because they're, they're so brilliant and it's and it just engages Catherine more to have a crazier bunch around her. How has Catherine changed over the course of the three seasons and what particularly, you know, what um, is maybe your favourite scene in season three for Catherine? Or maybe the most think, important one, like um, for I think she's changed a lot in the sense she was a romantic, I you know, purist of ideology, and I think now, you know, I think this season, you know, she has had to think about putting guns on her own people, and I think things like see, I think that was maybe that was in two, but um, even in three, I think you see there's scenes Al did where you go oh, she's lost her mind, you know, and she's like this kid who's just out of her depth. But so I think I think things like that where it's really like the legs are taken out from under her completely and she has to find her way back, um, which is why, you know, three is so great is that a lot of that happens and it's it's not a young, it's not a young, you know, she's a different kind of person. It's like you've really seen her grow up, you know. I think, you know, from a 21-year-old to a 20, you know, same as Al, 21 to now season three, she's 25, I think. Mm. 24, sorry. And I think, like, something sort of interesting with her as she's taken on the sort of uh, role of ruling the the, um, empire is that she's, um, 
like some of the things she thought would be sort of easy have been a lot harder than she thought they'd yeah. be. There might also be some things that she thought would be tricky that she's actually more comfortably slipped into than she would have imagined as well. But like for you as a as the showrunner, creator, writer, is there anything that's been sort of trickier in these three seasons for you than you maybe first imagined? <laughs> COVID, um, that was tricky. <laughs> Uh, yes, making a season with COVID, that was very trickier than I'd hoped. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think, I think probably the level of, um, I think what's tricky is just how to, it's things like that. It's how to manage a big cast and feel like you're creatively serving everyone. So they're having a, a career, a good creative life. Um, I think that's tricky. I mean, running a show is, by its nature tricky because it's like you know you're producing you're writing you're editing you put you know so i think it's like the the sheer scale of the show is 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 tricky i suppose in terms of you managing some days you know 350 people on set and so i think the the physicality of it is hard and also just each season presents its new dilemmas for a writer which, you know, I don't mind. I mean, for me, it's like very, I like challenges. I like not to do the same thing. So it's always like, what can we do new? But sometimes you're three quarters of the way through the season. You're like, it's, it's, it's hard. And, you know, actors, you know, get sick or there's all that kind of stuff, I suppose. Mm. Now the greats, an occasional, like occasionally a true story. Uh, On what occasions do you choose to tell the truth? Uh, Well, I guess we tell the truth in our own way, I suppose, mm. in in the sense that every season there, I'll, I'll go, there's three things she does that she did in real life. And this season, we're going to do them all. We're not going to do them exactly as it happened, but we're going to do it with the essence of her, what I think is honours her approach, you know, her curiosity and her drive and, you know, her, her imperfectness. You know, she wasn't a perfect leader. She did make mistakes. She did, you know, she wasn't always great. And so so every year, I guess, there's always three things, you know, it's like I think one, it was like the vaccination thing and then two was, you know, um, was it? and then three, you know, there's uprising, you know, against her and um, and how she took power and how she took on the Ottomans. And so there are all these things I wanted, to, I always want to do that are relatively true the way we do them, I suppose, you know. As a writer, is there ever like uh, like a, a, a moments where something that you went in the writer's room when you see what the actors have produced that sort of has surprised you or there's something like new that you didn't imagine when you were writing it that they find? Yeah, yeah, all the time, I think. Um, I think particularly like I have this thing where I, you know, I won't write the whole season before we shoot, mm-hmm. I'll write like four because I want to watch what happens, you know, and watch what happens mm-hmm. between people and how they grow and uh, which has completely altered seasons, you know, if, if we get, if I see something and I go, oh, that's cool. Like Nick and Al's chemistry, you know, he that was so great that in season one, I hadn't planned that he would fall in love with her. But then on set, I was just watching them and I was like, I think he'd fall in love with her because she's like no one he's ever met. And then we spend the whole second season into that idea, you know. So I think that's what's great about TV and great about having an ensemble and people like Alan Nick who, you know, I'm very close to and, you know. um, So I think that is what's fun to me about television is it can be, you know, it's probably harder to do it that way on the run because you are, you literally wrap the day and, go up to the writer's room and go, okay, he's in love with her. Throw out the last two episodes we thought of and uh, we'll start it. What could happen? And, you know, so, but it is what's good about it. And if you didn't imagine him being in love with her, I bet you didn't envision her being in love with him. No, like... no, not at all. But yeah. I, I kind of could see how it could start to happen. I think that's what you see. You start to know your actors. You start to know your characters more and more um, and seeing what they were capable of. And seeing what your ensemble is capable of, you you start to just kind of get into stretching yourself and stretching them, and and it becomes a sort of dialogue between the two, you know. Mm. Now, like, do you like? Uh, we're not going to publish this till after the season gets released. Okay. Do you want to talk about the big 
spoiler, or the big so people haven't watched the season yet and want to maybe now be a good time to pause this interview, watch the season, come back. Uh, uh, we have the uh, death of Peter um, on the ice this season. Uh, this character's fate has been such a big part of the show since season one. How did you decide to sort of break the ice with him this season? <laughs> Um, well, I think at the end of season one, I knew it would be season three and okay. Nick and I had chatted about it. So we'd, we'd made that decision, um, about, and then it just became about how, so that we've known for a long time, I suppose that at some point, because these two would, even though they'd, I'd had them become a love story, they, they were so different and he was just going to pull apart her rule if he got the chance and that eventually it had to end. And so it was just how do I make it end? So that was the big question this season. Was The big question was really when, because I knew last season how I was going to do it. I didn't know how we'd get there, but I knew he went through the ice on his horse and I knew I didn't want anyone to kill him because that's what you think will happen. And, and she stabbed him in season two. So I was kind of like, I don't want someone to kill him. I want, I want it to be... A, his fate and his flaw had brought him to this point and that's what killed him. But no one did. It was just a stupid, what happens in life, random fucking stupidity and a dumb luck, you know, something random happened to him, but all his decisions were dumb that took him to that point to being on the ice on the horse. Um, so I, I wanted that to be the case. So, and then it was just like, do we pit it? Do we put it at the end of the season? Do we put it in the middle? Do we do it in episode for a while? We were like, should we go really early? Uh, but I still wanted to play out their marriage more. And then so we decided six was good because that gave us time to grieve and do Pugachev and other things. Mm. What was it like writing the show without having Peter as a part of it? Because it was such a big part of it. Like when yeah, you wrote yeah, those last part. Yeah, yeah well, it was it was hard. It, well, it was what was hard was um their last scene. Nick's last scene was the ice scene, like the big, big 14 pager on the two hander and then him going out on the ice. That was the last thing we shot of theirs. So it was the last time I ever had that character. And Nick and Al, it was the last time they'd ever act those together as those characters. So they could barely get through it. That was so emotional. But I was also quite emotional because I was like, oh, I, I'm never going to write Peter again. It's, it's actually a horrible thought. Yeah. Um, but then you kind of go, okay, we've got four episodes. Let's let's go, you know. And then and then we're, you know, seven, we had the table read of seven and it was really, really great. So I was like, okay, well, you know, we've got this great ensemble and, you know, Nick's always part of the show and is, you know, um, so we just, you just go and do it, I guess. Got to keep going. Do, do you have like um in that scene uh, where he falls through the ice, like there's something sort of darkly comedic about yeah. sort of the way he just drops down, yeah. although it is so tragic, like, you know, because yeah. of the way we've seen that character grow and evolve over the course of the series. Um, yeah. You know, how, how did you like approach, and this might like even more broadly for the whole show, how do you approach sort of mixing the darkness and the comedy um, in moments like that? Uh, I think I, we try to stay true to the characters and let it, and sometimes I'll pull, I think it's just you judge it. Sometimes in the cut you'll go, oh, it's too funny um, for this moment. And uh, But I think usually, time, I think cause now I know the show pretty well, it usually comes out about right and then in the cut or on the floor, we do a floor read of every scene before we shoot it as well after the table read. So just before we start shooting we'll floor read it and then we block it and then I listen and then usually you can hear it yeah. and you go, oh, we probably don't need that. The hilarious joke. Or sometimes we go, we do need a hilarious joke because it's too dramatic and that's not the show. You know, the show is always undercutting itself with comedy. So we sort of know the style of the show. So you're always sort of working the tone for that. Mm. And like again, yeah, yeah, we we talk about like the the this this read this four read or whatever. What, how w did it feel different when that scene was being read on the floor because of its sort of significance to the series? Yeah, because yeah, it did because you know uh, we were out 
Yeah, I think because we were worked up for it. It was a massive setup. You know, we'd created a forest of ice. And um, yeah, and I think it was just really hard for them to get through it, you know, because they were sad about leaving each other in actual fact. <laughs> so the hardest that, yeah, so the floor read was fine because I I heard it and knew it worked. And then the hardest thing when the scene probably was they were acting like he was dead before the scene ended all the time. You know, they were kind of imbuing it because that's what they personally were going through. Mm. So we had to kind of stop and uh, drink vodka for a second and hug and then go. All right. <laughs> so we all had a shot and then they went back and they did it. And what, what do you think is the story of Peter now that we've sort of papped off his sort of three season arc? Where did he end up? Well, I think it was like a guy, like what I always wanted was a guy who has no idea what he's actually like. He's just literally a product of his upbringing. And this young woman comes in and sort of challenges him and he sort of wants to rise to that challenge and sort of does and sort of fails and sort of does and sort of fails. But when he ever he fails because of who he is, it's spectacular. It's like he has sex with her mother. You know, it's like it's not like small fails. So they're big. Mm. And then ultimately he just kind of skate the expectations, a, a sort of male expectation of you can't, you just you can't be the first lady. You have to go and like, or you can be, but you're going to have to go and kill a lot of people and take countries over. And even though, so I think the idea was always like he's going to struggle to, so I think for me it's a tragic, tragic comedy. He can't quite. He knows what he can should do, and he can't quite do it. You know. Mm. I heard something like that was always so funny with his character was this failure to understand accountability. Yeah. Like he just lived his whole life like there was no accountability for anything. Like which I, yeah. I always thought was really funny. And to this season too, some of those scenes with him and. Um, him and Elle um, at the dinner table and yeah. or, the, or the whatever meal they were having table, uh, just dis- their discussions there. Um, yeah, they were great. Yeah. What, uh, what, what, do you, what is, when you approach this show, what is the most important thing on the great for you? Um, I think the most important thing whenever I approach it is that it's, well, it's weirdly that it's fun. That it's, yeah. <laughs> that it's fun to write. And that it's fun to make, mostly fun to make. But really for me, it's like I need to enjoy writing it. Mm. And so it's tonal, which is about character and tone for me, that it's just a character-driven comedy, drama. And so it's always like bedrock is character. It's, you know, and there's a lot, a lot of plot in the show. Yeah. Um, it's always wedded to character. So that's always the most important thing. Yeah, And you don't want it just to be fun Tony, because you've been through some horrific crisis in your life and you're just trying to be in denial about it. That's not the reason. You're not like, you know, it's no, going, think... no, not like, not like uh, Catherine in the show no, after I... the ice episode. <laughs> no, I think for me, it's just like writing's fun and writing comedy is fun. So, uh, and I think if we, if it's fun in the room, it's usually fun on the page and, it all translates to the, then the actors are free to have fun. So, I mean, it's hard to make it fun. Like it's hard work, but, um, but for me, that's the main thing. I mean, you know, is what, that we're what, having a- what, what is like your favorite fun moment in this, in the, in the season three? Jeepers. Um, my favorite fun moment would be, I've got a few, I think Elizabeth, in episode one, when she does that weird dance to Peter as she talks to him and goes, well, maybe it's more interesting if I dance while we talk. And then Belinda did this weird dance out of nowhere. Um, I think that's great. I love the duel with the kids stuff. Um, I think all of that, you know, anything with Nick and Al is always a joy to watch. Um, so, yeah, there's just so much, I think. I mean, they're really... Um, yeah, I think they're the main, main ones, I reckon. And then, you know, there's scenes that this season that I was so great to watch from an acting point. Um, Belinda and Al's scene in episode 10, after she walks in on Al having sex and stuff, it was so great, that scene, when we watched it. Because 
they literally had oh god i remember looking at the watch and they had six and a half minutes and they hadn't done either side yet and uh and they on when they're on the couch which was like two pages each and i mean they just nailed it and we were just like wow you know and it's you know cut up great so you know things like that where you're really like in awe of their of other people's talent is mm. is exciting when you're on the floor mm. well tony thank you so much for talking the great with us today uh the show has yeah. done very well with emmy nominations in terms of getting lead actor lead actress writing and directing and nominations over its first two seasons so uh onwards and upwards to maybe that best comedy series race for season <laughs> three tony Fingers crossed. Thanks, yeah. Matt. <laughs> Thank you so much. People can go to goldderby.com to follow our awards coverage there. And Tony, just really appreciate the time today. Thanks so much. No worries, mate. Appreciate it.